The Story of Connie Hawkins by Charlie Eppers and Matt Berard. Cornelius Lance, or Connie the Hawk Hawkins, was born on July 17, 1942 in Brooklyn, New York. He became a fixture at the legendary Rucker Park where he ultimately began his basketball career. A falsely accused point-shaving scandal kept Hawkins out of the NBA during the prime of his career. This raises a question, what could have been? In his junior year of high school, attending Boys High School, his combination of size, athleticism, and speed put him on the map. In his first year of competitive basketball, Hawkins was All-City first team and led Boys High School to an undefeated season winning New York Public Schools Athletic League. He averaged roughly 23 points a game in his first season ever. In the following season, the Hawk put up a ridiculous 26 points a game, which included a game where he scored 60. He was ESPN's high school Mr. Basketball of the United States, which is something that is truly remarkable since he started the game a year prior. Following yet another undefeated season and winning the New York PSAL title again, Hawkins signed to the University of Iowa. He began attending the University of Iowa in 1960 and, as was the rule at the time, had to spend a year on the freshman team. Iowa students got to see Hawkins in action and he did not disappoint. He became an instant hit on campus. His basketball ability amazed all around him. After his freshman year at Iowa, everything came crashing down on him. He was a victim of the hysteria surrounding a point shaving scandal that had started in New York City. <laughs> point shaving is the idea of paying players to play for the spread of the game, helping betters. Connie began to surface throughout the scandal after Jack Molinas, a former NBA player who was banned for sports betting, mentioned his name. Connie admitting to accepting $200 for, from Jack Molinas for school, which was later paid back by his brother Fred. Before the scandal even broke out, the Hawkins family was very poor. They didn't even think of getting an attorney or lawyer or someone to represent them in court. Hawkins was expelled from Iowa for something he ultimately had nothing to do with. After effectively being blackballed from the college ranks, Hawkins ultimately had nothing, so he returned home and dominated at the legendary outdoor basketball court, Rucker Park. There have been many legends of the park, such as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Dr. J, and Wilt Chamberlain. After seeing his skills at the park and on the court, head coach, longtime head coach Larry Brown said he was the Julius before Julius, Elgin before Elgin, and he was Michael Jordan before Michael Jordan. He was simply the greatest individual player I've ever seen. This quote alone goes to show how talented of a player the Hawk was. After his days at the famous Rucker Park, he joined the ABL for a season playing for the Pittsburgh Rems which after one season the league failed yet another setback. He then joined the Harlem Globetrotters for four years when he shined. During the time Hawkins was traveling with the Globetrotters, he filed a $6 million lawsuit against the NBA, claiming the league had unfairly banned him from, part for, from participation and that there was no substantial evidence linking him to gambling activities. Hawkins' lawyer suggested that he participate in the American Basketball Association, also known as the ABA, as a way to establish his talent level as adequate to participate in the National Basketball Association, also known as the NBA. Hawkins joined the league and the Pittsburgh Pipers in the inaugural 1967-1968 season, leading the Pipers to a 54-24 record and the 1968 ABA championship. Hawkins led the league in scoring that year and won both the ABA's regular season and playoff MVP honors. Following a knee injury in 1968, in 69, the NBA finally came to its senses. After a Life magazine story revealed to the world that Hawkins almost certainly had nothing to do with the earlier point-shaving scandal in New York, the NBA, also known as the National Basketball Association, settled its lawsuit with Hawkins for more than a million, and he was able to enter the NBA draft. Hawkins was later selected number two overall by the Phoenix Suns. Despite losing the prime of his career in his first season in the NBA, the 28-year-old Hawkins averaged 24.6 points per game and earned all first-team honors. Hawkins continues the success in the NBA by being an NBA All-Star for his first four seasons and even getting as popular to be featured on the Saturday Night Live show in 1975. However, Hawkins' knees started to fail him and he retired in 1976. He was finally inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 1992, despite being denied previously. With all being said, missing the prime 
of your NBA career and still making the Hall of Fame, it is ultimately pretty impressive. Taking the first decade out of any possible athlete's career and they would not be the same. But somehow, he made it so. This raises the question of, if he didn't lose the major part of his career, could Connie Hawkins be considered an NBA legend or great?